Well, we will be in a few different places in the Bible tonight. Sometimes I don't give you a place to go. But go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. We are sharing a short series on, on being a faithful witness. We keep on going week by week, and I keep saying it's a short series. One day I'm going to have to quit saying it's a short series. We're just in a series on sharing our faith. You know, last year, about this time, I guess it was just Shelly and I that went and visited the camp the camp that hosted us this past summer for, for our Lakeway summer camp. And we got on a golf, golf cart with the folks, and, and I'm sure I'm glad we did because we covered a lot of ground, and there were some hills. You know, in hills, the, you, there are two things about hills at, at camp. Sometimes you're going to walk downhill, yay. Sometimes you're going to be walking uphill. And I was thinking about... The date for our camps, the hottest time of the year. And, and you know, I'm already physically challenged compared to the young campers. You know, they have a lot of energy, and, and I don't have quite as much. And I'm thinking about this camp, and, and I sure am glad to be riding on that golf cart while we're there. And, and then camp comes around, and, and I'm getting over some illness, which I'm handicapped even more. And so I took a trip out to a fellow I know, and, and he set me up with an adult tricycle with an electric motor on it for camp. And I am so thankful I had that at camp. I was, I was zipping right by our campers, all walking the trail to go eat. I was covering more ground than they were, in less time, with less huffing and puffing. They traveled in their human effort, best they could. They had Pat and Ben taking them. They were patting their feet and bending their knees. Pat and Ben took them to the lunch house a long way away. And so... And so they were going in their own effort. I was traveling in a greater power. They were moving themselves, and I had something moving me. Some Christians are trying to work and worship and witness in their own ability. Instead of traveling this spiritual journey in a greater power. When we talk about being a faithful witness, well, we talked about prayer, starting first with prayer. Pray, do not just pray, but definitely pray first. And we talked about the importance of prayer. Then we talked about faith. I mean, the, the faith like that woman whose, whose daughter was vexed with the devil. She had great faith. She was relentless. She was going nowhere else but to Jesus. And he told her, great is her faith. We need faith like that. And then last week, we shared compassion. There must be compassion in a saved soul who's going to heaven when knowing that all around us, there are those who do not know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And for us to be a faithful witness to those in the world, we, we have to have compassion. And tonight, we're going to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit concerning our witness. To attempt to share our faith, but to neglect the power of the Holy Spirit in doing so, is simply to fail. Jesus sent out His disciples in the power of the Holy Spirit. I, I've put you at Matthew 10, 16. And Jesus says to His disciples, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. 
But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. We have the entire Bible today, and, and we're to study, learn, and know the Bible, and the Holy Spirit bring to remembrance those things of the Word of God for us to share. There, there was a preacher who told of being out door knocking and door to door witnessing and visitation, and he, he took a, a brand new Christian with him. And this preacher, I know him, he's an amazing orator, he kind of preacher that makes some preachers sick. He just seems to speak so perfect and, and so smooth and and he grew up in another country as his dad was a missionary, so he had well, what some people would call that little bonus of, a, of an accent in his voice that, that people love to hear. And so he was taking this young man door to door and, and sharing the gospel in the, the most beautiful way, presenting it in, 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 in just such a, such a flowery speech, but giving the truth. And this brand new Christian asked him, can I have a shot? And he said, he hesitated a second. He said, well, you know what? Sure, you, 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 need, you need to do this. So yeah, you go right ahead. And he stepped away, quite a ways away, so as not to make this new Christian nervous in sharing his faith. And, and so he started walking back up saying, I probably need to bail him out. And who knows what's going on. And as he comes back up, he hadn't, hasn't been looking at him. He approaches him and looks. And there's tears in both of their eyes, the, the, the one witnessing and the one he's witnessing to, this brand new Christian. And this person who opened that door was trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior right then and there. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. The Holy Spirit is always related to the power of God in the Bible. Anytime the power of God is spoken of in the Bible, there is the Holy Spirit. To witness effectively requires that we depend on the person of the Holy Spirit and His operating power. We're in a a, a series on, on the faithful witness, and we come to the Holy Spirit, and think about this, the Holy Spirit of God is working on both ends. He is working through the one he is, that is doing the witnessing, and He is working on the one who needs to be saved. He's working in both situations, without... Without the functioning and power of the Holy Spirit, there is no effective witnessing going on. And there is no eternal salvation that's going to happen. No man cometh unto the Father except that the Father draw him. And the Father draws by the gospel and no doubt coupled by the power of the Holy Spirit. There, there's nothing taking place without the Holy Spirit. He convicts the world of sin. He calls us to salvation. He conveys the Scriptures to us. He covers us in sacrificial love. He is the Comforter and He seals us. He communicates supplication for us when we don't know what to pray. He consoles us in our sorrow. So there is a great importance concerning this matter of the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives and with us witnessing. We're learning the Word of God as we witness in our daily lives. And, and look, we must grasp the Word of God by way of the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher of the Word of God. 
We can be a great student of the Word. We can look up the Old Testament, the Hebrew, the New Testament, in the Greek. We can, we can become what we might think of as, as a spiritual scholar of some sort. And it's great to have a scholarly knowledge of the Word of God. But we must be spiritually fed the truth of God by the Holy Spirit of God. We must get a divine grasp on it. When we are taught by the Holy Spirit, look, it's not just Bible study, it is an experience with the living Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God's Word, it pierces us. It impales us. It quickens us. It's a living book and it makes us alive unto God when we get a Holy Spirit grasp on the Word of God. Somebody asked this fellow who did a little preaching, asked where he went to seminary. He said, HSU. And they said, what, what's that? He said, Holy Spirit University. And I, I like that because He is the one who teaches us the Word of God. When we catch something that sounds funny, that doesn't sound right, and we have to hit the delete button on it, like on the computer, that's the Holy Spirit who has taught us the truth, helping us to discern the truth from a lie, the truth from error. The Bible is the sword of the Spirit. And we must be affected by it before we can be effective with it in sharing with others. We must be governed by the Holy Spirit of God. We must have a, a grasp on the Word of God by way of the Holy Spirit. We must be governed by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And Gideon was obedient to all of God's commands. And where it looked like his stance in that battle was, was going south on his end, he obeyed God no matter what, and he won the battle. Correction. The sword of the Lord and Gideon won the battle. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to be leading our lives if we're going to be able to lead anyone to be able to be saved by Jesus Christ, to help them to be saved. For the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives, as we witness, we must glorify Christ. We, we teach on the person of the Holy Spirit and what He does, but He doesn't want any, any attention. He wants all the attention on the precious Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ is glorified, the Holy Spirit is working. When Jesus is exalted and lifted up, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be working in and through us. Enthroning Christ is the empowering in our lives that we must have by the Holy Spirit to truly be a faithful witness. But how about the gut-wrenching by the Holy Spirit? We talked a little about, a bit about compassion for the lost last week. The Holy Spirit causes a longing in our soul for the soul of another that is unsaved. It's a gut-wrenching longing for another salvation. And, and we're clothed in the power of God, if you will, by the Holy Spirit to help another to be able to come to Christ for salvation. You know, the measure of concern that we have for souls uh, of, of others is determined by the cry that's outpoured from us for God's power in our lives. We must see that we need God's power 
in order for a soul to be saved. It doesn't matter how, how much we study a method or a process of telling people about Jesus. It's, it's nothing but a show if it's not empowered by the Holy Spirit. He must be glorified. The gut-wrenching desire we have for another soul, that comes by the Holy Spirit. We must be going in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us. He has taken up residence in our life. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says in Romans 8 9, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So there is no second blessing and earnestly asking for the Holy Spirit after you're saved for some kind of double blessing. You receive the Holy Spirit the moment that you are saved. That's not about necessarily fireworks going off or some kind of cartwheels being done from your life, but the Holy Spirit comes to occupy our lives and live inside. We must go in the power of the Holy Spirit. How do we express, how is it going to be expressed if we are really depending on the Holy Spirit to empower our witness? We're going to be praying. We're going to be praying for the power of the Spirit to be uh, working in our lives, to be a faithful witness. The prayer of dependence on the Holy Spirit is, uh, that's going to open our hearts. That's a sign of our submission to the Spirit. If we gather together and we're praying before we go out to tell others about Christ, say together as a group... Just tell Jesus, tell about Jesus as you go, you know. But when we gather as a group too and and we pray, that is expressing that it is not in and of ourselves to be able to save someone. I tried saving a lot of people the first year of my Christian life. I tried to save them. I didn't I didn't know that's what I was doing, but that's what I was doing. And and uh, you know, some man some man was saved in this little town and uh preacher the or or he made a profession of faith anyway and uh he was the town drunk and um and he ran across that preacher and he said brother so and so you saved me 25 years ago and he said you you look about like the kind of saving I could do <laughs> we we can't save it's not in our ability and and so and so prayer is not to just be a formality in our lives. It is, it is the expression of our calling upon God in desperation, lifting up holy hands like a little baby wanting to be picked up, that we might be empowered to do the work of God. The going in the Holy Spirit requires prayer and submitting to God's will. The power of the Holy Spirit does not function in prayerlessness. We are really robbing ourselves of quite an experience in the Lord if we are prayerless in our activity we're attempting for the Lord. As we go about faithfully witnessing, there can only be those successful results by dependence upon the Holy Spirit. We might also consider the gouging in the Holy Spirit, as in the sacrifices and the, and the suffering that we will go through in witnessing. I, I talked about the kind of faith that we need because of the rejection, the persecution, the mocking that will come upon the Christian as the Christian shares their faith with others. And, and in the same way, it's that we have many tools that the Lord has given us, not just great faith, but the power of the Holy Spirit to press through these things, to be able to sacrifice, make those sacrifices that are required to be a faithful witness. And that's going to take the power of the Holy Spirit. We, we must have the leadership of God's Spirit in what we do to serve Him. And uh, you don't have to turn to all these places, but 
And I told you that the Holy Spirit is always related to the power of God in the Bible. And Isaiah 45 two teaches us that, that the power of God goes before us. He says, I will go before thee. In Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8, He goes behind us. So He goes before us. He goes behind us. Deuteronomy 33.27 says, Underneath are the everlasting arms. He goes before us. He goes behind us. He is underneath us. In the Great Commission, Jesus says, I am with you always. So the power of God by way of the Holy Spirit is with us. But He's not only with us, He is within us. John chapter 14 and verse 17 says of the Spirit, He dwelleth in you and He shall be in you. He dwelleth with you and He shall be in you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Why is it that that He's not talked about too much? Why is it that He seems to be the one that would be neglected in the Trinity of our God? We, we can't do anything without Him, and He goes with us, and He is in us. He is upon us, the missionary, popular missionary verse, Acts 1.8 says. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So, so He is upon us. You know, God gave His Son to save us, and God has given us the Holy Spirit to empower us to serve Him. The way that we are going to live the Christian life after we are saved is by way of the Holy Spirit. It is not in us. I had a teacher who taught me that over and over because he knew in the beginning of a Christian life the miserable experience that so commonly happens where someone is putting their best effort into living the Christian life. They want to do the things that God has called them to do. They find themselves with still that desire lingering around to do those things that God doesn't want them to do. And that will make a Christian miserable. Praise the Lord for the truth of His Word that we can understand the ministry of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God. I'm going to say it this way, and I've been saying it this way, and that is a person cannot live the Christian life, but the Holy Spirit lives the Christian life through a person. So we must be yielded to the Holy Spirit. We must step back and let Him lead our lives. The Holy Spirit is, is in unison with the Father and with the Son and with the Word. If He's leading our lives, He's going to lead us to live and to do and to know truth. We must go in the person of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives makes a difference in everything about us and our witness. We talk about... We talk about the change that the Lord brings about in our lives. Well, when we trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit comes to live in our lives, and we're yielded to the Spirit, we clearly see nine byproducts of the Holy Spirit. We, we're, we see nine results of the Spirit in our lives. And they are products of heaven. They're ingredients from, from God and, and glory. And, and so it's something we've never had before. And so we might look at these. And, and the, the first one is love. You find those in Galatians chapter 5 and verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit, the result of the Spirit in our lives is love. The, love is the governing principle of life. And, and this isn't love as the world knows love. This is the self-sacrificial love of Jesus Christ that Romans chapter 5 says has been shed abroad in our hearts when we have been justified by faith. And so there's not only love, 
there's joy. This inner condition of joy that that overcomes outward circumstances in our lives. That is exactly what we all want. And that happens by way of the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, I have... I have taught Habakkuk at, at camp in morning devotion. I've preached a message on Habakkuk here, that, that three-chapter Old Testament book of the Old Testament minor prophet, and, and he starts off in a pretty bad way. He's kind of calling God out because God's not calling out judgment upon the people in the land. There's wickedness going on, and he says, Judgment doth never go forth. But he starts getting better. And he says, I'm going to sit down and shut up and go sit in my tower. And I'm going to take your rebuke when it comes. I know rebuke is coming. And I'm going to listen to you and what you have to say to me, Lord. And then let let me just skip to the very end of this book of Habakkuk. Because he was all bent out of shape in the beginning over what those who were trespassing against the things that the Lord were doing with what seemed to be You know, no slap on the hand, no consequences whatsoever. But after the Lord got through with Habakkuk, he says, Habakkuk 3.16, when I heard, it's good to listen to the Lord. The Holy Spirit helps us to, to listen to the Lord. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the, at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. He wasn't rest, he was restless. Now he's talking about resting in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. You know what? As bad as it gets. No matter if it's as bad as it gets, the flock shall be cut... Uh, all from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and He will make my feet like hinds feet, and He will make me to walk upon mine high places. All of that, just to kind of... Joy just kind of got me tonight and earlier this week as I studied this, the inner condition that is more powerful and more persuading than the outward environment. God taught Habakkuk that lesson, and we have that lesson in that book. The fruit of the Spirit is peace, inner tranquility in adversity. And then there's long-suffering. The result of the Holy Spirit dwelling in our life is long-suffering the patience to suffer wrong without seeking revenge. And then there's gentleness. This is a kindness that is engaged in the act of helping someone else. And then there's goodness. Goodness has both purity of life in it and unselfish service. And then there's faith. Faith speaks of a... You can think of faith as a dual loyalty here to God and to man uh, in a loyalty. Meekness is strength within that is under control. Meekness is not weakness. It's strength within. You know, those who think they're strong in the world look on the meek and say that, say that they are weak. But, but when you have a strength within, that's a lot stronger than anything anybody else will show. And then there's... There's another fruit of the Spirit, and we'll just, uh, and that is temperance, self-control. Man, don't, don't we need that? Hey, doesn't God give it? give it? He gives it by way of the Holy Spirit. Every one of these help us in our areas of being a witness as well as our entire Christian life. We need to depend on the Holy Spirit. Jesus says it this way in the Gospel of Luke. Be endued with power from on high. The power that He gives. 
Jesus says, I'm going away. He teaches us, I'm going away in one form, but don't worry, disciples. I'm coming right back in another. I'm going to send the Comforter to you. Paul says this, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be under the control of the Spirit. Be governed and guided by the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. Alcohol gives some kind of temporary natural lift, then it's a big fall. But the Christian can live in a spiritual, exhilarated life filled with the Holy Spirit continually throughout their lives. It's a constant thing that happens. It sticks, if you will. A Spirit-filled Christian, another thing about it, they never have to say that they are Spirit-filled. It's going to be revealed in their lives. It helps with our verbal witness. It helps with our witness of simply walking through this life daily. When we're a Spirit-filled Christian, our lives are going to witness to those around us. Another Christian cannot deny the presence of the Spirit in, in one that is Spirit-filled. The unsaved can't deny that something is going on in the Spirit-filled Christian. They don't know what it is, but, but let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And the Spirit-filled Christian does that. Philip let his light shine before men. And that eunuch wanted to be saved by Jesus. And he asked Philip how to be saved. God the Holy Spirit was working through Philip and he was working on that eunuch. And he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. Let me go ahead and... I think I pinned that up. Let me go ahead and read that. Acts 8, 27. I'll read through about 35. 26, I'll start with. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose, and he went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, and eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning, and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he, he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shears, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speakest the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And, and long story short, that that eunuch was saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that wasn't just a coincidence that Philip ran into that eunuch. That was the work of the Holy Spirit working through Philip and working on this eunuch. The Holy Spirit prepares his witness and he makes the heart receptive of the one he's witnessing to. That is something that, that is always a part of our prayer when we pray before we, we go out door to door that, Lord, you would be preparing the hearts of those behind the doors that we will knock on. He does that. God the Holy Spirit is still doing the same thing today. 
He's just doing it in another way. But the same thing has happened. One man walked out of a grocery store, saw a woman standing in the parking lot up by the store, uh, get maybe about to go in or something, and, and he had such a great heaviness on his heart to turn and witness to this lady. And he turned and he went to tell her about Jesus and she opened up and poured her life story out. By the way, and I, and I know a lot of you know, when you bring up Jesus to even a stranger, you're going to hear the deepest things they've ever been through in their lives. A lot of times that's going to happen. And that's what happened here. And the end of that, this woman trusted in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, went to the church of the man who was witnessing to her, she was baptized, and she served the Lord for several years. And, and that, was, that was the man being receptive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and that was the woman allowing the Holy Spirit to open her heart that she might be saved. Thank God they were both obedient to the Spirit and she lived a saved, God-glorifying life. The Holy Spirit is so very active in God's redeeming work. We need to be mindful of that. We need to depend upon the power that God gave us. We must express our dependence on the Holy Spirit every time we go to witness and pray that the Lord God Almighty, His Holy Spirit, will empower our evangelistic efforts. This is going to be the Christian whose, whose most effective ability in witnessing is going to be found. This is going to be a successful, faithful witness, the one who depends on God the Holy Spirit. And maybe we'll just have... We'll pray in just a second, but as God the Holy Spirit works on our hearts, maybe we'll just bow our heads and, and just have a quiet moment. And... Let the Holy Spirit deal with our hearts. And then, in just a minute, Brother Brock Bullard... You go ahead and close us in prayer, sir.